So now I'm going to look at uh, a couple of examples from the book where we're going to uh, use some of, the some of the equations that we developed in Chapter 2, and then we're going to make that transition to away from the equations and to the use of the Smith chart. Um, and then we're going to make one kind of final transition um, away from kind of, uh, uh, you know, using the Smith chart manually to using uh, some easy to use and uh, powerful uh, free software that's available. Um, so for this example here, um, we have a load that's 30 ohms, J60. Um, I borrowed this picture from a different part of the book, so we're interested in what the input impedance looks like at a distance z equals l away from the load. Uh, we're assuming that we're at a frequency of 2 gigahertz. We're assuming a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. We're assuming that the distance is 2 centimeters away from the load, and we're assuming that the phase velocity is 50% of the speed of light. Okay, so uh, using this information, um, maybe the first approach based on, um, you know, kind of the main takeaway of uh, from Chapter 2, where we talked about um, impedance being transformed along um, transmission lines, this was kind of like the, the main equation uh, that kind of came out of chapter two. So maybe our first approach is to use this equation. Um, if we use the the fact that uh, you know our, our operating frequency and our phase velocity here, we can figure out the um, wavelength of the um, signals in the transmission line. And uh, if we plug that information into this equation and we plug our distance of you know L equals two centimeters, we end up with this expression here. Another approach is uh, to use reflection coefficients. So, like we said in chapter two, the reflection coefficient at the load is equal to um, the difference between the impedance of the load and the characteristic impedance of our system. So if we plug all of our numbers uh, into this equation here, we end up with our reflection coefficient of uh, 0 0.63 with an angle of 71 degrees. Again, uh, we know our wavelength based on the, uh, this equation here the uh, phase velocity and the operating frequency. So far we've, uh, we've calculated our reflection coefficient at the load, but if we move our reflection, the measurement of our reflection coefficient to the point where z equals l, the transformation um, is defined using this equation here, which I mentioned uh, in the last lecture, where we have our reflection coefficient at the load multiplied by this factor, this exponential. Um, so here we end up with our with our reflection coefficient at z equals l, and then we can use uh, an alternate equation that we found for um, our input and in impedance based on the reflection coefficient. Plug everything in, and uh, we get the same result, which is not surprising. So one thing that a transmission line does is um, it preserves the magnitude of the reflection coefficient. So when you measure the reflection coefficient at a load and then you move some distance down the transmission line and, and take another measurement, uh, say gamma in here, the magnitude of gamma in is going to be equal to the magnitude of the reflection coefficient at the load. Um, so what, what changes is um, the angle of the reflection coefficient um, at z equals l. So that's uh, seen by um, considering what happens when you uh, multiply a complex number by an ex a complex exponential like this. So it's I ex expand it out here a little bit. Um, so in black here, that's the this is gamma gamma naught, and then this quantity here, uh, the two pi. the 2 pi over the wavelength times the distance, this is referred to as the um, electrical length. So how does this look on the Smith chart? Uh, well, we plot our reflection coefficient at the load. It has a certain um, magnitude that's shown here, and it has a certain angle of 71 degrees. Obviously, if you were to uh, multiply these two numbers together, you would end up with 
0 0.6325 times uh, the difference between these two uh, quantities, 2 pi L over 1. Okay, so this is the, the rotation that I'm talking about. Um, here the, uh, the rotation or the resulting angle is 120 degrees. So from here to here, 71 degrees, or it's negative 120 degrees, I should say. So the point that we end up at is the point negative 120, corresponding to an angle of negative 120 degrees, but with the same um, amplitude. Okay, so you can see how our load impedance, which would be the intersection between the, uh, you know, the, the curve corresponding to um, you know, this reactant's normalized to 50 ohms, obviously, and the curve corresponding to that uh, constant resistance circle, that impedance, that load impedance gets transformed to this impedance, okay? And, you know, we can use this information again in a similar fashion to last time, uh, use this reflection coefficient, plug it into our expression for the input impedance and end up with, with this result.